Okay, nothing in this video is going to be to scale, so that's how it's going to be all the way through it. So I have to keep posting that. Anyway, my theory contends that any celestial body, stars, planets, anything that's rotating with a continuous and solid and steady rotation, especially with a pole up, you know, constant and continuous, has a magnetized ferrite iron core. I mean, it's not tumbling in space like an asteroid. So here we are orbiting Saturn, the golden age. And uh, this is before the cataclysm and the polar alignment started. You know, the golden age, the good sun. We were all having just wonderful lives. Light, gravity, a nice electrical ambiance. Just everything was going great. And then things changed. So here we're going to zoom out from a top view. Here's Earth and Saturn having a good old time, the golden age. I'm going to show in a future video where they saw Jupiter coming. And they saw the planets with it. And there was three of them. Mercury, Mars, and Venus were with Jupiter. Mercury orbited the closest, then Mars a little farther out, and then Venus was the outer orbiting planet. But they saw this coming. They made record of it. And I found that record here on Earth. <laughs> I'm going to show it as soon as I'm ready. But this is my rendition of how the polar alignment happened, how the cataclysm happened, and how the polar alignment happened. But they seen this huge thing coming. And then they eventually saw the smaller planets with it after it got so close. So they knew there was something there, but they had no idea what they were in for. That's the key part of it, I guess. So here's Jupiter with Venus, Mercury, and Mars orbiting it. Like I said, Mercury's closest, orbiting the fastest. Then Mars, and then Venus is the outer one, probably orbiting a little slower than Mars, but those two are closer to the same speed than Mercury. Mercury's just pretty much flying around it pretty quick. This is my rendition now. Take it or leave it. But it's interesting to say the least. So that's what's coming at them. But they're not seeing it this fast. You know, they're not orbiting as fast as I'm showing here, but they're orbiting. They're seeing these three planets orbiting Saturn. And the sun is out there. I'm showing it here, but it's way out there. I'm just making it so you can see it. But the polar alignment happened horizontal with the sun's equatorial plane. We weren't vertical, you know, 90 degrees perpendicular to the sun's equatorial plane. This alignment only lasted 17 days, the entire thing, the cataclysm, alignment, and everything. So here's the basic positions of them when it started. Saturn's there, Earth, we're there. Then Mercury is coming around Jupiter as Jupiter's getting close to us. And Mars and Venus are still coming around the backside of Jupiter, so we might be able to see them, but they're not getting close yet. So the first problem is when Mercury gets in between us and Jupiter. The timing was just perfect here. So here comes Mercury coming around, and right in through here, Mercury just gets ripped to shreds. The plasma from Jupiter, that's the first strike. You know, planets start to tilt, Mercury's shredded, and we're just showered with oil, fire, and brimstone. Uh, the plasma strikes, it's just huge, unbelievable. And these are the huge, this first plasma strike was the big one. There's two later ones that were smaller, but this is the initial plasma strike, initial flipping of the planet. Uh, all kinds of chaos happened, especially when Mercury got ripped apart. And I'll show a demonstration. Okay, I'm going to try and demonstrate or make an example or experiment, demonstration of how the polar alignment worked. Yeah. The initial one, and I'll explain this. I've got three boards sticking out screwed down to this other 2x4 here. And on the end of these boards, I have uh, plastic acrylic spheres, okay? They're like this. Here's one a, a half, a hemisphere. And there's two hemispheres there and two there. And then two smaller ones there. So before I, and I took one hemisphere and drilled a hole in it, and I attached it to the wood with a stainless steel screw that's non-magnetic. Okay, each sphere, before I glued the other half to it, they're glued together to make a complete sphere. On this one, I took a one inch neodymium magnet, put it in the sphere, and then I glued it to the top. So it hangs there like this. And I did the same thing in the middle with a half inch neodymium magnet on that one. And on this one, there's a three quarter. Okay, neodymium inside that sphere. The out, these outer spheres are the same size, the plastic, but the magnets are different. 
and this magnet in the little sphere is a half inch. Okay, so this one is going to represent Saturn, okay? This one is going to represent the Earth, and this one is going to represent Jupiter. And what I've done, well, let me show you what these bars are. It's like this one. It's just a piece of wood painted black with the sphere screwed in, half of it. And I put the little half inch magnet in there and then glued the other half of the sphere down so it kind of hangs there. And like I said, the screws are stainless so the magnets don't stick to them. So that's what I've got. That's what these are, okay? And what I'm going to show on the polar alignment, like I said in the previous section, any planet that has stable rotation and stays <clears throat> either vertical with the sun or like Neptune on its side. I think it's Neptune or Uranus. I forget. I said earlier. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is take this little bar magnet. You see the reds north, blue south. These spheres are all painted north and south. Reds are north, blues are south. I'm going to make sure the south poles are straight down on all of them. And right now the south poles are all straight down. I'm going to use this to hold Earth in, in position because it keeps wanting to turn. So when Jupiter came in, it spun the Earth. And it, as it comes in closer, it spun Saturn. I hope you saw that. They all turned that way. The north went that way, the south this way. So that's, I think that's what happened with the polar alignment. It's hard for me to get them just right because it's got friction in there. I didn't put any oil or anything. But that's what happened with the polar alignment. And as Jupiter went away, if I bring, if I bring Mercury or Venus in, they're going to spin with the same alignment. North that way, all of them, north that way, if you see that. And if you add another planet in here, it's going to do the same thing. So the polar alignment was horizontal with the sun's equatorial plane. It wasn't vertical. It could have been somewhat out of tilt, but I don't think it was completely perpendicular this way to the sun's equatorial plane, if you see what I'm saying. So here again, I want to show that, you know, the sun's out there, but we're not perpendicular to its you know, north-south, it's equatorial plane. We're, we're just like, you know, like this. We're horizontal lined up. Like I said, Mercury came in, was the first initial plasma striker. It acted like a diode, and it just, Jupiter ripped Mercury apart and showered us, and it may even connect it to Saturn. So that was the first huge plasma strike. It tore Jupiter, or Mercury down to its iron core, and it probably got flung away from Jupiter at this time. I have, maybe it went towards the sun. It's my assumption. And I'll just run this again, you know. Mercury comes in. It didn't stop, but I stopped it there so you can see it. It's so small on this on this video. And it didn't keep cur curving around Jupiter. I think it got kind of slung out into space. So that was the first plasma strike. That was when we got showered. So then here's Venus. It's coming around next. Mars is still behind Venus coming around. So when Venus came around... It was has a much bigger orbit. So when it came around, it got caught right there between us and, and Saturn. And Jupiter had moved on to the right more, but my animation won't let me move too many things. So that's when the second smaller plasma strike happened, you know, when, when Venus came in like a beautiful comet, and then she turned wicked, you know, fire, the, the, the dragon plasma. That's when all that happened, when she finally got in line right here. Beautiful, and then she turned bad. And that's when the sun turned bad, too. Uh, the plasma was going from Saturn through Venus towards us because Jupiter kind of moved on. Like I said, my animation showing it in the same place, but that was the second smaller plasma strike, all the fire in the sky from Venus. We started seeing a lot of that, and David's account of that is perfect. Then Mars came not too long after Venus came in. Venus got in there, and this is all moving in motion, but I'm just showing it as my animation will let me. So then here comes Mars, and it gets caught in there. And by now, Jupiter's moved on, and that was the third smaller plasma strike where Jupiter, where Mars was the warrior. This is when the uh, pillar to heaven, the mountain to heaven happened, and everything lined up, and, and Mars took the brunt of all the plasma coming from Saturn through Venus towards us. Mars took the brunt. 
And like I said, Jupiter's kind of moved on by now. Jupiter and Mercury have pretty well moved away by this point. So we're, it's, things are calming down now. So here's just another view of it from the side here. But I'm showing Mercury or Mars coming in, and you can see that. Just another view from the side view of that. So I wanted to show that. I think that's more how it happened, the, the, the timing of when planet came in, when and where and why. Because I do see a record in, 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 in a place on, Amer in, on the planet. They made a record. Okay, the golden age, before Jupiter showed up, Earth was orbiting Saturn. The golden age, light gravity, warm temperatures year-round, the whole planet, everything's good. We're good. And then over here is Jupiter. It's coming towards us. It's got three planets. There's three planets orbiting Jupiter. You got Mercury real close. Then you got Mars. And outside you got Venus. Okay? So as Jupiter gets close, the first thing that happens, Mars and Venus are still back here coming around, but Mercury gets in the middle between us and Earth. Like so. And like I said, Jupiter came around at an angle, but I'm just showing it swinging in from the side. I don't have an <laughs> elaborate setup here. So Mercury comes around close to Jupiter, and we're all turned now. We've got a polar line that just happened. Jupiter's, the, the plasma going past Mercury, it's acting like a, 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 a diode, a positive diode that way. Jupiter's going through Mercury towards us, so Jupiter, or from Jupiter through Mercury towards us, Mercury gets ripped apart. All the material from Mercury is showering Earth as it comes around, okay? But it moves fast, but it gets ripped apart right here through right there, just ripped apart. All the stuff is tore off of it and it's left with an iron core. That's all that's left to Mercury, okay? So then, as Jupiter's still passing, here comes Venus, the outer planet, and it's slung around, but it goes on the other side of us, closer to the Saturn. And Mercury is, that's why the Greeks called it fast, because it went by fast. But it got ripped apart as it went by, it just tore up and gone, because it was orbiting close to Jupiter. So it, it, its orbit was quick. So that's why Mercury and the Greek gods is the fast one. It went fast. Then comes Venus. She comes in with beautiful lights and all kinds of stuff, and then when she gets close to lining up, she starts putting out fiery uh, tangles of plasma coming from Saturn back towards Jupiter as Jupiter's leaving, okay? And that she gets caught there for a little while. But right when she gets caught, here comes Mars, which is the inner two between Mercury and, and Venus. It comes in between Venus out here and us. There's Venus, and then Mars comes in between Venus and us and Mars comes in as the savior so Venus came in as the the princess and everything looking beautiful and all that and then there's all a bunch of fire and plasma hitting so she turned wicked then after she turned wicked we was getting hammered from the other side and possibly Jupiter had went by enough or was still pulling enough to cause the current to come back from Jupiter or from Saturn this way <coughs> Saturn turned into the bad Sun <laughs> Then Mercury came in and saved the day. Or I'm sorry, Mars. Mars came in and saved the day between Venus and us getting pummeled from our good son, Saturn, who turned bad because of Venus. Okay? I think that's how it happened. And we'll move on. Okay, I may only have one shot at this. So I've got Jupiter, Earth, and Saturn, okay? The first plasma strike before Mercury came in between and then Venus and Mars. What I'm gonna try and do is with 15,000 volts, uh, positive on Jupiter, going into south, and I've got them turned south, north, south, north, south, north. So the north of the Earth is looking at the south pole of Saturn. And I got my negative over here on the uh, North Pole of Saturn. 
So I'm hoping I can get a charge through here. So I only, I, don't, I may only get one shot at this. So I'm showing you how it's set up. I'm gonna have to take several attempts to get them close enough together to make it work. I'm gonna do the arc again, you'll see it. Let me zoom in. So you can really see it. If so I can get my camera to show. It's like it's going around the earth. It's hitting it, but it's jumping around it. If you see that. I can't get it gapped any farther than that. Anyway, it's burning Earth up. <laughs> She's getting smoked. If you notice, the outside two big ones aren't doing hardly anything, but the Earth's getting chewed up pretty bad. That's what happened to Mercury, I say. I'm gonna melt my plastic here, but I leave it going, so it's gonna melt plastic. But you see, it's going through the plastic hemispheres on the left and right. The Earth's caught between the middle, or Mercury, possibly even Venus. But it's melting my plastic. But if you notice, Jupiter on the right is coming in the top side of the Earth, and then Saturn on the left is getting pulling it in from the bottom, because I've got positive right, let me turn this a little bit, negative left. If you notice, but anyway, that's the plasma shots between planets, the polar alignment. There you go. <laughs> And we'll see, let's just see what I got left. Here, separate them here. I'm sure they're hot. Yeah, it melted my plastic, but not all the way through. <coughs> this side did. The hole over here on Jupiter, but <coughs> anyway, I was trying to show the plasma between planets. Like my theory says, uh, every planet has got stable rotation let me zoom this back out. It didn't burn this one much. Earth is crisp. <laughs> and Jupiter has a hole over here on the side of Earth or Mercury, whatever you want to call this little one that got fried. I think it's more like what happened to Mercury. But anyway, any planet that has stable rotation and stays, you know, vertical north and south has a magnetic core that's causing it to rotate. That's what my theory says. And, and all the planets that got in the polar alignment had that. That's why they twisted South Pole to North Pole, South Pole to North Pole, South Pole to North Pole, and they electrified just like what you saw here. <laughs>